Welcome to The Trader's Clinic, your regular shot in the arm of trader insights, philosophy and knowledge, brought to you by two professional money managers, Ali Crooks and Charlie Burton. In each episode, we answer your burning trading questions and cover all things from the world of trading. And in the world of trading, what's coming in this episode? Well, I like this. It's a really, a really good topic. And I think something a lot of the guys who are listening could learn from is why you need to be a stubborn trader. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think um, with this one, I'll kick it off and then we'll bounce this one around. Mm. So one of the things with trading one of, it is the markets are, are, are moving and challenging you all of the time. But you have to have that if you <laughs> you have to be stubborn in order to stick to your plan. Basically, being a stubborn trader is sticking to your plan when you've just had the markets are bouncing around and maybe you've just had a few losers in a row or you're going through a static period where you're just not making any money or whatever, rather than becoming that trader who then jumps around as well, thinking, oh, I need a new strategy or I need something else and starting to change things. You need to be stubborn to be able to stick to your plan. Like you mentioned on a previous episode, you get people who they have a few losses and then they effectively change their plan by moving their stops to break even too soon. Or maybe on that fifth trade, and that fifth trade is the one that goes and comes a one to five. Or it would have been if he hadn't moved his stop, him or he or she hadn't moved their stop too, uh, too early. Or they bank their profits too soon. So they, they're indirectly not trading their plan. So you need to be stubborn. And it's tough because when the market's just giving you loss after loss and you're in an open profit and you think, oh, really want to bank this, this profit right now would pay for those losses. But that's not the plan. That's not the trade. You've got to stay with that trade. It's very, very difficult. But over the long run, that is what will give you your overall long term profitability. If you start jumping around away from the plan, then your results will be erratic as well. Yeah. And I think in the current climate or the, I say the current climate, the current um, information climate, it's even more important because as, a, as a, a trader, whether you've been in the game two months or two years, you are being bombarded with information or most information via YouTube, via, you know, it doesn't matter mm. where you go, Instagram, the algorithms are set up. You know, if you go and if you go and research something about trading that is for your specific strategy or whatever it is, you're going to be bombarded with adverts. You're going to be bombarded with information. You're being enticed and your subconscious is being, being, you know, messed with in a way. You're being pushed. Oh, what about this? If you tried this? Oh, I don't so all this time that you're being, you're, you're being exposed to all this information that could easily mean you, you, you weren't stubborn. So the idea is you've always got to have a higher level of that because you're being bombarded so much with the opportunity to change what you're doing. Um, and it's in those moments. It's uh, For me, it's in those moments when you are feeling your most weakest or you're at the point that you... You are you're almost pressing the button on the on the different the different system or you're you're at that point where you want to give up is mm. it's that's the point where the 80 percent are thinking the same thing. All right. They're not all trading the same setup as you, but every trader goes through that. And it's it's being stubborn day to day and sticking to your plan. But it's also in those moments when you really want or you're you're at your you're at your weakest that you you don't succumb and you you, you maintain that maintain that plan, trade the plan. It's um, it's Adam and Eve, really. It's it's succumbing to temptation. The apple is mm. there. The temptation to take that right now, you know, when you were told, no, 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 the big picture, the plan is don't eat the apple. Don't eat the <laughs> apple. And and it's the same with uh, with trading. It's that temptation to to move away from the plan, whether it's banking the profits too soon, moving the stops up, or whatever the adjustments are to make yourself feel better again. And so, again, I think like what you've just said, you need, if you, the market's trying to put you off all of the time, gamify it. We've said this before. The market is trying to lure you in to behaving like those 80% who are going to fail because it's only the relative smaller percentage of people who are going to be profitable over a sustained period of time. So, Look at what you're doing when you're potentially going to impulse impulsively make a decision. Are you moving away from your plan 
just to make just because of some of the things that have happened to you previously. I've talked to pre, uh, before about professional snooker players, and you could look at any professional sports person really. Whereby I remember Steve Davis, the, the six-time world champion, said once, "Just because you lost or, or you missed the previous shot, you, if you carry that into your next." shot when you're next at the table and thinking oh yeah but I went for that one and that middle pocket and it you know I missed and you're carrying that baggage into the next trade you have to constantly be focusing on the now and it's the same with trading what happened on the last trade has no uh no bearing on on the outcome of the next trade and so gamify it keep telling yourself that there's a little devil there on your shoulder who's tempting you in to to do all these things because then you become as you've just said you become a statistic so if you keep reminding yourself that sort of thing then you're more likely to reject that inner demon who's trying to lure you into doing something different and come away from your plan so if you can do some of that and just recognize what you're about to do it puts you in a better position to say no i refuse to be that's what the retail traders out there are going to do i am not going to behave like them yeah if anything that's the moment when you go yeah i'm feeling what i'm feeling because i'm a human and that's what everybody else in this situation would feel yeah. the difference is whether you act on it or not. Yeah, so exactly. acknowledging that, and I think sometimes what traders want to do is they want to, they want to, they don't want to feel the feeling. They're like, I, I want to get rid of the feeling. No, it, especially in the early days, you're going to feel on that fourth trade. If you've had three losers, that you mm. don't want to push the button, but that's the mm. exact reason why you need to. So it's being able to separate yourself from the, the feeling and realize that you, yeah, Following the plan is key. Exactly. like that. Yeah. like that a lot. Great stuff. Good. And we're on to our question, which I like this. Um, what have you learned from your biggest winning trades? Normally we're asked, you know, about our losers, you know, and learning from losers. But what have you learned from your biggest winners? Um, <laughs> it's the same. For me, it's the same old, same old. Uh, stick to the plan. <laughs> yeah. So because the biggest winners are the ones personally that I've held on to of course and I've stuck with them and stuck with the plan and um really it's remembering because we all as human beings we will we'll forget some elements of the past whatever it is in life whatever we'll have an inner dialogue an inner story to an event that took place whatever it might be in life but when we're recalling trading events so the question here is what have you learned from your biggest ever trades so for example uh there was a trade i took in 2014 um which was a short on the dow i think it was and one of the the things that i took from that trade and i was with my traders at the time and we traded it collectively in my community and they were constantly wanting to bank profits because there were constantly signs that the market might reverse so we shorted the dow it was falling it was going in our favor but there was constantly reversals happening like certain days where there was been some big old reversals and they kept on saying charlie you know are you going to bank the profit now because that's that that's a big reversal there no because that's not the plan the, the the target is down here stay with stay on target as uh from a star wars perspective and um no, I've got to stay with that. And yes, it may reverse all the way back up because there has been some big reversals here or whatever on the particular days. What actually happened was they they reversed for a little bit and then would just then carry on back in the original direction again. Or they didn't even reverse anything more than a single day and then just started selling off again. So for me, um, what have I learned from some of my biggest trades is the market will retrace against you. The market will pull back against you, against your position, but you have to deal with that. You know, it's not just going to keep going day after day after day in that in that in that one direction. You're going to have up days if it's a short, and and down days and down pullbacks if it's a long. So you've got to mentally prepare for all of that. So there and the news. The news will come out which will favor those retracements, those bounces in that Dow um, example. There's, because in the moment, when you look back at a chart and you, 
it was a really nice crescendo. So overall, it, you know, it came down quite nicely. But there were some big, violent updates, which no doubt at the time, there was news associated with those non-farm payrolls, whatever it might have been. Um, and so you can't allow your plan to be disrupted by, oh, yeah, but the non-farm payrolls has come out that, like whatever or a piece of news. Well, you can't backtest that. So, and mm. you can't, if you've got a plan, you've got to stay with your plan. If you start reacting to, oh, well, some Fed member said this or some central banker or, or uh, a retail sales report came out like this, you're always going to have a reason to justify coming out of the trade because the next day there might be something else that comes out which sends it lower again. So, yeah, stick with the plan. It's not easy staying with staying with it there's going to be counter moves and at that point in time where news is going to